In this video, we're going to get started using Vault, which is Unity's official visual scripting tool. It is very visual and very simple to use while also being immensely powerful. You can use it to make complete games or use it as a learning tool to help you learn programming. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Alright, so here we're going to learn how to do visual scripting in Unity using Bolt. Bolt is already a very robust visual scripting tool. It has been in development for several years now, and Unity bought them a while ago. Now, since Unity bought the tool, they have made it completely free for anyone to use. If you're coming across this video while being completely new to Unity, check the link in the description where I cover the Unity basics in a quick video. Here I will assume you know what are transforms, game objects, components, and so on. Okay, so Bolt is extremely easy to install and get started. First you go to the Asset Store and just search for Bolt and you'll find it. It's completely free, so just add to your assets and then click the button to open in Unity. When you do, it opens up the Package Manager. And down here you can see a button to download, so click on that and then click on import. So right away this only imports a few files. And as soon as it's done, go up here into tools and click on install bolt. So it asks you a question and just click on import. And yep, now it imports all of the actual files. If you want you can go ahead and just delete the install bolt folder. Alright, so we see our very nice wizard tool. Let's go ahead, hit next. And now here it asks you a very interesting question. So do you want human naming or programmer naming? Now this is a really interesting question because it depends on what your goals are with visual scripting. One of them will show you nodes and actions pretty much just as standard English. So for example it says list of game object. Whereas the other one will still work as visual scripting but will show the nodes just like the underlying C sharp syntax. So it shows exactly as you would write code so a list of type game object. So if you have no concept of programming syntax at all, it might seem like human naming is the way to go. However, I would strongly encourage you to go with programmer naming. Now the reason is because even if you have no interest in learning written C sharp programming, it is still a huge help to know the absolute basics. It will help you communicate with programmers and easily find solutions for any problem you have. And by just using programmer naming, you will be exposing yourself to basic programming syntax. So even if you're not intentionally trying to learn C Sharp, you will learn it as you use visual scripting more and more. But at the same time, just like it says down here, you can change this at any time. So if you feel intimidated by programming syntax, you can start off with human naming and then later on transition into programmer name. Okay, so in this case, I will be choosing programmer naming. Then here we see some assembly options. This is for more advanced users in case you want to load external libraries. In our case, we want to keep it simple, so just leave it all at the default and click Next. Then we have a list of types. Again, it's for more advanced use cases where you want to add your own custom types as nodes. So for now, leave everything at default and just hit on Generate. All right, so after a bit, everything is generated and we have Bolt fully installed and ready to be used. Awesome. Let's hit Close and yep, let's start actually using it. Let's try making the most basic example possible in Unity, which is to make just the cube spin around. So first, let's create the cube. So again, just a basic 3D object. All right, there's a basic cube in our scene. And now to make a visual script, we can go up here to click on Add Component. Then we go under Bolt. And in here, we're going to add a flow machine. Okay, so right away we see some options. We see a field for a macro. The macro is really the script. So go ahead and click on new and just save the macro anywhere. In this case, let's call it our spinning cube. All right, there it is. And now we can also add a title and summary if you want. So let's just say. All right, so there's our macro. Now let's click on edit graph. And yep, right away the graph window pops up. So we can already see the default state of our graph. We have a start event, which is fired just once at the beginning, and an update event, which is fired on every single frame. So this is the graph window where we're actually going to draw our graph. And there's another window related to Bolt that's also very useful. So go up here into Window, and we're going to open the Graph Inspector. This one works basically the same as the normal inspector, except it's for when you select nodes inside of the graph. 
So for example, selecting the update node and over here, I can see, yep, there you go, update is called on every frame. So let's dock it right next to the graph, just like that. All right, so here's our basic layout. We have the graph and the graph inspector, okay. Now let's remember what's our goal here. The goal is to spin our queue. So what that really means is to rotate it on every frame. So let's start off by getting rid of the start event since we don't need it. And now we can go up here to our update event and click and drag out this arrow. And as soon as we drop it, yep, there you go. It shows a menu with all the actions that we can take from this input. So if you want, you can browse around this list to see all the nodes that are available. So for example, over here, you see a whole ton of math functions. Then here we can access some collections and under code base, we can access pretty much anything. So as you can see, there's tons of nodes to do exactly anything you want to do. Now, since there's so many of them, the better approach is simply to use the search bar. Now we want to rotate. So let's just type in rotate. And as soon as you do, we see a whole bunch of rotate methods. Now, in this case, what we want to do is rotate our transform. So it's going to be one of these. And we can see that they take different types of parameters. Let's just select the simplest one, which is this one here, which just takes three floats. So click on it and there you go, there's our transform rotate node. And here in the graph inspector, we can also visualize all of the inputs and outputs. So the first input is the flow, so it goes from event into there. Then we have the target, which is going to be this object. And then we have three floats. Then for the outputs, we just have an output flow. All right, so in this case, let's just rotate it on the Y axis. So over here, let's just hit one. And yep, that's it, this is all it takes. This will add one to the object Y angle on every single update. So just like this, let's test. And yep, there you go, we have our very nice spinny queue. Awesome. Now, one really cool thing about Bolt is how you can visualize the flow inside a graph. So we can see that the update event is constantly being fired and it's being received by the rotate node. So this becomes an extremely useful feature as your scripts become more and more complex. Okay, so this is the most basic graph. Now, when it comes to scripting, one very important element are variables. So let's look at that. So for the variables, there's another window we can open. So again, go into window and open up variables. All right, so here we can see tons of variables that we can use in our scripts. Let's dock it right next to the flow graph. So right underneath the graph inspector. Yep, there you go. And now here, just a quick Unity tip. You can make the active window full screen by clicking on the window and then hitting on shift and space. And there you go, just like this, it makes the current window full screen. Alternatively, you can also click on this full screen button. So it goes from that to that, or just double click on the window itself. And on these buttons here, you can switch these from the left side to the right side. Personally, I prefer on the right side. So here we have a bigger area to work with. Okay, so to make a variable, it's actually very simple. Down here on the graph variables, we can click on here in order to input a variable name. In this case, let's call it our speed variable and click on the plus icon. And over here, we need a type. Now for our speed, we want it to be a float. So yep, select float and then some default value. So in this case, let's set it to something like three. All right, so that's it. That's our variable all set up. Now we just click in this position right here and then drag it into our graph. And there you go, here we have our get variable node. So from this port out here, we get whatever value is stored in the variable. So we just take this one and connect it onto the Y angle. And yep, there you go. Now it's going to rotate our cube based on the speed that we set in the variable. All right, so let's test. And yep, there's the cube now spinning faster. And again, Bolt is awesome and shows us the flow of values that are going into the inputs and outputs. So we can see that over here, we have a three being sent from this variable onto this input. And if we modify the variable in here, instead of three, let's say nine, and yep, there you go, it automatically updates. So even while the game is running, you can easily modify the code. All right, awesome. Now let's try doing another basic thing. Let's listen to some input and make our cube jump. Now, in order to make it jump, let's add some physics. So for that, just over here on our normal cube game object, let's add a rigid body component. Yep, there you go, just like that. And let's also make a floor so it doesn't fall into infinity. So just create a new plane. All right, so here we have our cube. It's rotating and falling along with gravity. Now here in our graph, let's expand it. And now let's right click and we're going to add something. Let's search for add force. And we're going to apply some force to our rigid body. So let's go with this one that takes three floats and then the mode. Okay, now here we want to jump up. So let's add some value on the Y. 
and for the mode let's select impulse since it's meant to be instantly applied okay so here's what we want to do just add some force on the y all right now we want to trigger this on a key press so let's right click and we're going to search for get key down yep there you go input get key down so once again you can look in the graph inspector to see what it actually does so it returns true during the frame when the user starts pressing the key down and then here for the key let's select the space key and now we have our two outputs one of them is the simple flow and the other one is the boolean so this boolean will be true when we press the space bar and we only want to run this rigid body when that one is true so now the question is how do we connect these two nodes since we can't directly link the boolean in there and now what we do is let's drag the boolean and right away we see our little selector and let's select our branch so this branch node takes an input it takes a flow and then we have the output which are two flows one of them if it's true and one if it's false so if it's true then we want to run and actually add force to our rigid body and we also need to connect the flow to the branch input okay so that's set up however you can see that these nodes are slightly transparent that means they're not being used at all now one key concept in programming and running code is the flow of execution essentially the code runs line by line so it runs the first line then the next line and so on here we can visualize that same process with the flow of execution so we start off on the update then we go and we execute the rotate node and then after that we need to connect this into the get key down which will then run this one then run this one and run this one essentially there always needs to be a continuous flow from start to finish and right now you can see they're no longer transparent since they are indeed being used all right so here's our complete script the cube will always be rotating based on the speed set in the variable and then if we press the space bar it will add force on the rigid body and make it jump up okay so let's test here's our spinning cube and down here on the graph we can see exactly what it's doing so the flow is constantly running but yep there's no flow in here since it only runs when this one is true so now if i press on the space key yep there you go the cube jumps up and you can see that one become activated for exactly one frame so since I press, if there you go, you add some force and he moves it upwards. All right, so here we have a very simple script fully working. All right, awesome. Okay, so this was the complete basics to getting started with Bolt. And now that the basics have been covered, I want to ask you what would you like to see? Would you like to see more visual scripting content? If so, exactly what type? Maybe some complete games, maybe some Bolt compared with C Sharp, maybe converting some of my previous made systems to be made with Bolt, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.